Hello and welcome back to the Coders Legacy channel. In today's video, we're going to explore how to add color maps into our matplotlib graphs. Color maps give us a way of assigning a range of colors to our graphs instead of just a single color. Changing the color of a graph is actually pretty easy. We can just say color is equal to red or color is equal to blue, where color is a parameter available in almost every matplotlib plotting function. But a color map is basically a way of assigning different colors based on the value inside that graph. For example, let's say you have a bar chart with many bars. Okay, so what the color map is going to do is going to define a range of colors and based on the value of that bar in the bar graph, its color is going to be set accordingly. So for example, lower values could be red, higher values could be green, the middle values could be blue. Okay. So that's how color maps work. In today's tutorial, we're going to make our own color maps because matplotlib actually provides us with some built-in color maps, uh, but those are a bit limited. Obviously, they can't be, uh, you know, there are only a few dozen of them, I think. And we'll talk a bit about that in the end of the video. But for now, let's focus on creating our own color maps. Okay, you can see it right here. I've already created them beforehand. All the code is written out beforehand. We're just going to go through a few examples in today's video okay so the first thing that we need to do we need to do is import the linear segmented color map class from the matplotlib.colors module okay then we create the color map all right using the from list function the first parameter is gonna be the name of the color map that's not really relevant though the second parameter is the one we really want to focus on this is the range of colors in our color map. There are currently two colors in here, okay? And this is basically one parameter, okay? Don't get confused, it's not two. It's a single list with tuples inside of it. Each tuple corresponds to one color, okay? Basically, a color map operates on a scale of zero to one, where zero represents the minimum value in the data set, and one represents the maximum value in the data set. Okay, so this is the hexadecimal color that corresponds to that value. So how do we read this? What does this mean? Well, it means that the minimum value in the data set is going to have the color green. This is the hexadecimal code for green. And it means that the maximum value in the data set will have the value red. This is the hexadecimal color this is the hexadecimal uh, value for red. So what happens to the values in between? Well, let's find out. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this color parameter in the bar method, and we're going to use it like this. And I'll explain exactly what's going on here right now. Okay, let me just separate this a bit out. Okay, so what's going on here? Well, a color map is basically a function. It takes, it takes basically uh, a single value or an array, okay? And then it returns the corresponding color, basically. What's, what's really going on here is that it's taking our data, okay? It's taking this data and it's normalizing it, okay? And basically bringing it on a scale of zero to one, and then it's passing it in those values into the color parameter. Okay, I know this sounds a bit complicated now, so let me just run this code once and then we'll we'll go over this again while looking at the output. Okay, here. Now, here is our output. Take, take a good look. Basically, let's just compare it to our code. We can see here that the lower values start out from green, as we specified over here. Okay, as we go up, it begins changing colors. Okay, it becomes, there, there's like a green element and a red element. So as the value goes higher, the green element becomes less and less, and the red value becomes higher and higher. So over here, we can still see it's pretty green. And over here, Python, Python's bar chart, is where green and red are roughly equal. So the color is brown, which is basically a mixture of the two colors. Over here, Java, the red begins outnumbering the green, and it becomes more red. And here, JavaScript is the most red because it's the most highest okay that's basically how the color map works let me show you something interesting now we're going to add in a new color over here okay we're going to add in 
0000FF. Uh, this will give us the color blue. Okay, because let me show you something interesting. That if the data is heavily skewed, what do you think is going to happen? We can add in Ruby over here at 50,000. Okay, or maybe not that much, 25,000. Whoops. Uh, did, did, oh, yeah, okay. So here we have our data and it's quite skewed. This is red, but because it's so red, it's so high, the value is so high that it basically is making everything else look green. Uh, now, this is obviously going to vary. When your data is skewed, you will have to evaluate a lot of things. Sometimes you may want to adjust the color map, sometimes not. But um, I want to make a point here. So I'm trying to show you how you might deal with skewed data when using color maps. So over here, what you can do is modify the range, okay? You can modify the range of values used here. There are a few interesting tricks that you can use, okay? For example, we could take this to 0 0.75. And let me tell you the problem. The problem basically here is that everything is basically green. We, we just have green and red. There's no distinction between the green values. We want to compare them too. I mean, I'm not sure if you got what I said, but I hope so, anyway. All right. So this is one thing that we can do, okay? We can make this uh, 0.25. Let's see, what, what, let's see what's gonna happen. All right, now look here. See, now this is not all green now. Now we can tell that, okay, there's a difference between C++ and Java, for example, because previously Java was pretty much green. But now the colors have changed because now we have adjusted this uh, range. Now green is from 0 to 0 0.25. We've basically given red more, more of a range, kind of. Uh, basically, at least I hope you're understanding this. This here is our second example, all right? And it's using contour plots, okay? Now this is actually where things get interesting. This is actually where color maps are used. The first example, I just put bar charts in there because I wanted to build up your concept. This example is where the color mapping really comes in. C contour plots, heat maps, etc. Surface surface plots. This is where co color maps are useful. This is how we use it. It's a lot simpler. We just need to use the CMAP parameter and just pass in the color map uh, object, and the rest is handled automatically. I'm gonna run this code now. We already know what this color map does. From zero, it's green. Then it turns to red. I'm gonna run this code now, and let's see our output. Okay, this is our color map. And if you're familiar with contour plots, they're very often used for geometry, uh, or sorry, geographic things, terrain, judging uh, gorges and mountains, that kind of thing. Like over here, for example, if we're assuming this is the data for a mountain plot, then, sorry, a mountainous area, then red is the peaks of the mountain, okay, the highest value, and green is uh, maybe it's an uh, indent in the ground, like a gorge or a troll, basically. So that's what this is telling us. Uh, red is the higher areas and the elevated areas, and green is the uh, depressed areas. Okay, now let me show you something interesting. Right now, we can not, uh, like, let's, uh, there's no middle ground, is basically what I'm trying to say. There's elevated ground and then there's lower ground. But what's the middle ground exactly? It can be a bit hard to tell in circumstances like this. So what's good is that we create an anchor point like this. What I'm going to do is zero. How do you do white? It's all colors, right? So we'll add in white like this, run our code, and look now what happens. You see now, now we've basically created white as an anchor point, a base point. We can assume that white means the middle ground, normal ground. And the green areas basically mean, you know, they mean the indented areas, the depressed, the troll. And red, red shows up a lot more clearly now. We can clearly differentiate between the normal area, the high area, and the low area now. So basically adding in a third color as a point of reference is pretty useful when using color maps. Okay, now one more thing I might, I mean, I should mention is that we can also reuse the same color. Okay, 
let's say we want to reduce the focus on the green. Wait, no, other way around, I think. I think we want to increase the focus. Let me run this code just to confirm the output. Okay, look here. Basically, you can use this kind of trick where you use the same color twice in this list and you can kind of eliminate certain values. Okay, we basically eliminated some data from this from this graph. And that may or may not be useful depending on your situation, but you may come across in a scenario where you want a certain color to, pre to prevail over the second one. So this is basically what you can do. And what its uses are will honestly de depend on you and your situation and your data, okay? So yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, there's just one more example we'll take a look at, and that's pretty much it. Oh, and by the way, I did I did say that we can use built-in color maps, right? Uh, and if I remember correctly, summer summer is the name of a matplotlib color map. So if I just run the code like this, I think it's gonna work. Yeah, there we go. This is uh, how built-in color maps in matplotlib work. So if if you are wondering, that's basically how they work, and you can Google a list of these if you want to, and you know use them. But yeah, obviously this gives you a lot more control. And by the way, if you want any ideas on how to structure your color maps, just go online, just write uh, color map picker, and they'll give you a whole list of them, really pre-built color maps that, you know, are built by, that they have good design sense, basically. Okay, so on to our third example. And what's up with that? Probably a false warning. Let me just run this code to confirm. Okay, cool. So this is a surface plot. And as you can see, we're using color maps. And the color map that we're using is over there. Uh, what, is, what is that? Yellow, that's yellow. And then we have green. And then we have darker green, I guess. Looks like it. And uh, how do you zoom in into 3D plot? Oh, never mind. But then, oh wait. Both of these are blue. I'm basically using the same reusable trick, uh, reusing the color blue. And I'm not sure why I did that. I think I wanted to put more emphasis on the edges, but just to see what happens, let's remove this. Okay, and let's see what happens. It must have been, yeah. Okay, see, this is actually a good example. This is a good reason why you might wanna reuse the same color because now the edges aren't very blue, right? We can barely see it. So again, I told you this depends on your data, but sometimes you may want to do something like this uh, to give priority to a certain type of value in your data set or something like that. Okay, cool, right? And this uses the same CMAP parameter and we don't really need to do much other than just creating this object and passing it in. And one thing I totally forgot to mention, this is the number of values in our color map. Uh, basically, this is a range from zero to one, right? So this kind of specifies how many values are there generated between zero and one. The more values that you put in here, the more continuous it's gonna be, and the less you put, the more, well, discrete it's gonna be. Uh, I'm talking about discrete and continuous values. So for example, if you just put four in here, uh, let's see what's gonna happen. All right, you can kind of get, get my point, I think, just by looking at this. Uh, it's very, it's very uh, solid colorish because I, I just put in four colors. And as you increase them, it's gonna become more of a, more of a gradient, basically, more shading, okay? But don't put too many. Uh, too many is also bad. All right. So that's the end of this video. Uh, hope you guys found this useful. And if you wanna see more content like this, anything else on color maps that you feel like isn't really, there's not, not a good tutorial online available for it, do let me know and we might take a look at that. See you guys in the next video.